Welcome back to P4. Today we are looking at Curve Sketching, Unit 3.3. Now this is more specifically sketching parametric curves or parametric equations and what they would look like as curves. Now most parametric equations are not going to be obvious and easy for you to understand what it looks like and to sketch straight away. Okay, so what you do need to do is you just plot the point and, you know, if it is like a trig one or whatever, you just plot them in order. Okay, because sometimes you do get these patterns, um, not so much in P4, but you do get these patterns that can give you a spiral and these can all come from parametric equations. And, you know, these ones tend to be more in the further maths, but you get like a figure of eight and so on. And just plotting them in order is how you get the, the pattern. Now, what we'll do is we'll jump straight in with a couple of examples. It shouldn't be too difficult. Um, it's just really an extension on how you used to plot graphs when you were doing them, you know, early GCSEs. So here in this example, what we're going to do is draw the curve that's represented by these parametric equations. And we're drawing it between 0 and 2 pi. So what I want to do is set up a table. So in the past, if you think back a few years to your GCSEs and pre-GCSE, you would have done a table in terms of x and y. Now we're also going to do a table in terms of x and y, but we also need it in terms of t. So we'll have t, x, and y. So here I have my table. I've got t, I've got x, and I've got y down the side. Now I need to think of values of t. I need to go between 0, which would be my first value, and 2 pi, which would be my last value. And I want to just spread them out. So I could just think of nice values to go up in. Since we're dealing with sine and cos, going up in quarters should be fine okay obviously the more points you can do the more accurate your graph will be in some cases you will need more if you can't see the pattern um, and other cases you can get away with less it's almost like a trial and error bit where the more of these you do the better at it you will get and there we have it not the best space to hook but um, it will do. So all I need to do now is substitute my values of t into my x and then into my y. So substituting 0 in, we get 3 cos of 0, which is 3, plus 4, which is 7. And substituting it into y, we get 2 sine of 0, which is 0. Then if I want to substitute in pi over 4, we get 8 plus 3 root 2 over 2. Now, since I'm going to be plotting these, there's only so accurate I can plot them. So looking at one or two decimal places here is probably the best. Okay, so I'm actually just going to go with one decimal place as... I'm going to struggle to plot it much more accurately than that. Okay, but, you know, I can go to two decimal places if, uh, if I wanted to. So I'm just going to skip ahead now, substituting these values of t in. And there we have my table complete. Now, when I'm drawing my axes, which I need to do next, I just need to look at my values in terms of my x value. My largest value here is 7, and I have no negative values. So x, I can go from 0 to 7. y, I've got a 0 here, but if I go along, I've got 2 is my largest value, and here I've got negative values, and minus 2 is my smallest number. So my y I need between minus 2 and plus 2. Now, all I need to do now is plot the points, and I want to plot them in order. Okay, so my first one is 7 across, 0 up. 
so you can see that that is right on the line here okay what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little dot for each one now my next is 6.1 and 1.4 and that's on there now next one I've got four across two up nice easy one to put then I've got 1.9 and 1.4 which is there and then I have one zero so just on my x-axis here now I'll just plot the other points quickly and now we have all my points plotted all the way around back around to seven zero final step then is just to join them up and I go in the order in which I plotted them now hopefully you'll be able to do this a little bit better than me I think uh, sometimes doing these things digitally not so easy give me a pencil and paper any day And there we have it okay kind of a rugby ball shape an oval shape and that's it just remember plot them in order I just go from smallest to biggest which was me plotting them this way even if I plotted them this way I would get the same okay just important though to plot them in order of size of T So first, let's draw a table. Next, what we need to do is just substitute our values of t in to find our x and y values. So for example, minus four squared is 16, but I also know four squared is 16. Minus three squared is nine, positive three squared is nine. So that will enable me to quickly fill in the top. Now, with the bottom, I'm going to start off with a zero. Zero in there is zero. One cubed is one over five. Two cubed is eight over five. Three cubed is 27. And four cubed is 64. When I put negative values in cubed, my answer is going to be negative. So these are going to be the same, but they're going to be the negative versions of them. Now, I put these in in terms of fractions there, but it's not as easy to use them in fractions. So it's actually probably better to put these in as decimals. So I'll pop the decimals in underneath now in red. And there you have them in terms of decimals. Now, so all I have to do is to sketch this. Actually, I should say draw this because we are drawing accurately rather than a sketch. And here you have your graph. Um, a little bit strange, but hey, and it should be a little bit better for you to draw on your graph paper, your pencil on paper and stuff you know certainly easier than me and for the next few I'm just gonna put the sketch just so that you can just check the shape of your graph if you get the shape right we're good so for this one you should have a graph that looks this kind of shape for number three you're looking at this shape where we've got a little asymptote here we're heading towards remember to follow the order in which you write your t you know from smallest to biggest obviously you could go biggest to smallest as well and you get it going in the other direction but it still looks the same so for this one let's start off with a we're going to find the cartesian so let's rearrange x currently is three minus t so t is going to be three minus x and then i want to substitute that into y so y equals 3 minus x squared minus 2. Now, this is obviously really useful for sketching our graph. Now, part b, 
so we've got a positive x squared we know that it's going to actually have a minimum value of minus 2 and this will happen when x is 3 so this is the coordinates 3 minus 2 and if I look here we got 3 squared is 9 minus 2 is 7 so it's going to hit the y-axis at 7 so this is the overall shape of the graph so I'm going to pop there now obviously between minus 2 and 3 you won't quite have this shape so I'll pop up what it will look like between our actual limit and there we have it so we're between 0 and 5 as we know from our x minus 2 gives me 5 and 3 will give me 0 so 0 and 5 and obviously the y values there between the 7 and the minus 2 okay but obviously you need to draw this accurately so quick video today hopefully it helps with these graphs it is just a bit of practice it shouldn't be too difficult for you to draw these um in exam conditions okay see you next time